Okay, so um, how I'm usually starting the track, it's for sure with uh, kick and the bass. Most of time, I think it's like 80% of time or 90% of time. Can you uh, start by going over some of the functions and the options that Ableton has? Is that okay? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, like under categories, you have sound, drum, instrument, all that stuff, what goes in there. Ah, you mean this one? Yeah, and, and what? So, so before when I was uh, building a track, I was used a lot of them. I just stacked one, two, three of them and then try to build up the track from it. But as I said, in the end, the mix down can, can be really uh, sounds not so good because they have different swings and uh, it's easy to build track like this. But in the end, you will have really big problem with cleaning your uh, mix down. Your track gonna be dirty your track gonna be uh, like some weird things inside and not gonna work properly because drums have different swings. You're not really mean some of these drums and like it depends from the genre, but for my genre, this not really work. So if, if I'm using some kind of drum loop, I always like put it like uh, to arrangement view so this is the two view, like you can do like this, build the loop like this, but I usually build my loop just right from the, this view, because then I can really like already like uh, build my loop and see what, what's going on like. So yeah, what I'm usually gonna do is just like, you see, it's not uh, on the grid, this loop, and every single, uh, every single hit is, something is a little bit forward, something a little bit delayed. So that's why when you stack all these uh, all, all, all this, uh, sounds, because this drum loop have this kind of uh, thing, and this, this one you can check, it have more like on, yeah, on a beat, but this one is, uh, is also on a beat, so they will slowly conflicting each other like even some small sounds like so uh, that will make some mess to all mix and uh, better to better to keep uh, and take taking care about this thing before you starting making a track I mean when you're building a track better to take care of these things already not like thinking about oh I'm gonna put it now like this and later I gonna clean everything. No, you will, <laughs> you will not gonna, you, you're not gonna clean it uh, later. Like you need to make it uh, really good from the first time you adding the sound. Like, uh, and then you really know what's going on. And that's why I stopped to using much loops because like I was doing this only because it have some different groups and you have some different sounds so I will not repeat over and over but actually it takes not so much time I will show you like if you just build it by your own and uh, for this like usually I using the dr drum rack I made already so basically is uh, I put the kick drum so this is the how to make a drum rack you go to instruments you press the drum rack and you put it here and then you add all your uh, samples you like. So I add to this drum rack just uh, one sample pack from Zinheiser. It's called Progressive House Drummer. So that's it. I just put it have like 100 kicks, <laughs> which is like pretty a lot. And you can basically this 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 is more than enough. Then you just make a MIDI, MIDI clip. Then I just try to make it okay. You can start just up like, like this, just checking the any kick you like. And that's why it's also, some, some people they do the, you can use, you know, you can, uh, you can do like this with a drum rack or you can go to add audio file and put every kick like this, you see? Like you, and then you copy it copy 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 and you can say maybe it's the same but actually it's not the same because uh, if you use the drum rack and midi 
and uh, put all these kicks here you can so easy switch you can switch between kicks you know and if you're just using samples it's not so easy to switch samples and like it will take so much time so i'm not not much working with uh, audio i'm mo more work working with the midi i'll work with audio but later when i need to record something from my midi and make some nice uh, how to say no not experimental but some specific things then i use audio as a sample but for drums i go for midi and i i think better for everyone to go for midi so yeah like for example i put uh, this drum rack with the kicks then i put one drum rack with the hi-hat and uh, make midi and then just you will see how it's like why it's working like this so yeah So yeah, from this point, I already can see like the first hi-hat, this one was, I really like it. Then I like this one. This one, which, which gonna make it more, uh, more interesting. And uh, from that point, I already can start to looking for another hi-hat to add variation on my arrangement. I already thinking about when I gonna develop my track I will need to find some more hi-hats. I can do it now, but later. But uh, I will I will come back for this uh, hi-hat loop later or now, and like um, and redo it. Like for example, because then I can like add one more, which which gonna be in for another part of a track, you know. And then I can add one more or delete some of them, and then I can really like see what's going on, but not adding extra samples you know like uh, channels it's gonna be only one channel easy to to control it that's why also midi is really good with uh, samples you will need to for each different hi-hat you will need to add one channel one channel one channel one channel and the more channels you're gonna make the the more bigger your project becomes and it's more and more harder to understand what's going on and, con and controlling this so yeah like i go for midi so yeah for example yeah like we can start like this then i put like clap and snare So also, of course, better to learn uh, short keys for com do this stuff, like make a new MIDI track, like uh, combine, like how to say, like combine the MIDI track, copy path, cut, and this, this, like just with the keyboard, it will make your workflow much faster rather than you just checking everything uh, with your uh, mouse. So yeah. Like So uh, with the claps is actually pretty often thing to layer them. It depends from the track you're making for like progressive uh, music. I think one clap is okay because usually in progressive they make it atmosphere and all drums they try to put it a bit more like further in the mix. So it's, it's they sound but they all kind of together and then they like, a, like a one sound in the end. They're not like separate. So yeah, for progressive, but for like for tech house, you need to layer the, the claps. So then they're gonna be like much stronger. So it depends what you're doing and like what kind of uh, music. So I'm, I'm, I'm making something in between of everything. So sometime I'm layer the claps, sometime not, but I really happy with this uh, sample pack. I think they have really nice claps. Yeah, and with the claps, I think is the, is the thing when already you need to add uh, 
the baseline so you can start to like thinking what kind of uh, track it's gonna be then you can come back to the uh, to the clap like because you need to add more or you change it so yeah we can start already doing some baseline and uh, I think for this one we can try to do some uh, simple baseline let's make a key like um, so the thing with the baseline like if you're just starting producing maybe you know or not but there is some keys wh where the sub bass gonna be really good like for example if you do your bass line from somewhere E to something like B this is okay the rest of the keys they gonna be problem with them so I prefer to do it something like uh, G for example why I'm doing this, I'm gonna show you now. Uh, let's, like, well, for example, we do it like, like this. Uh, we go for audio effects, go to utilities, you put spectrum on your baseline or sub, and you're gonna check the frequencies. So yeah, you can see that uh, the G is uh, 49 hertz, and 49 hertz is okay. So you better to look for your sub bass gonna be from 45 until 65. So anything like this gonna work pretty well. So you can do, go for G, or you can go for B. So yeah, higher than B, it's gonna be already uh, the, ba the the sub bass gonna be already too high. You can do this. I mean, you not you not have to do your all tracks on these keys, but uh, it's much more easy to do this kind of electronic music between B and uh, F, F sharp, F and E, something like this. So yeah, we can go, we can go higher to A. <coughs> I think just because uh, we have this speaker, we don't have subwoofer here, so it's will be much more easy to to hear what we're doing and uh, I'm not musician so I use a lot of this thing you can find scale here and you can choose your like root note a and then you just choose different uh, progression I choose the minor so a minor and you can see all the notes they already uh, highlight so you can know what kind of uh, what kind of key gonna be in the same uh, same progression, same uh, key? It can be like this, like or uh, we can. Can, we can make it longer then it's gonna be like also it's like uh, I will keep the same uh, how to say picture of the keys but just make some of them longer and shorter and they will feel like a different uh, things going on this is really it's so easy to work with uh, with one one key baseline or sub because you don't need to worry about uh, compression and everything it's everything gonna be on the same volume and that's why most of progressive uh, producers they do like this they just put one note and then they put on top some kind of arpeggio which have uh, lower keys and arpeggio already have melodies but the baseline they usually do just like yeah it's already like working but for sure like for for baseline we, don't, we need to do the side chain side chain is when the the baseline gonna duck each time the kick gonna come so yeah
you can do it with a compressor or you can do it with special plugins you can do it with volume shaper like it's just how how it's easy for you is different things in the end most of these things gonna work so it just depends how you're gonna apply it so yeah maybe you can can uh, can change the the clip again so one really important thing what happen with my production when I feel that I improve that before I move on from here already after like I have this kind of loop and I try to figure out something but basically it's uh, still you can add a lot of different drums and hi-hats and everything so for example just try to make some interesting thing with the smaller hi-hat maybe like kind of closed hi-hat let's let's find do we have them like okay <laughs> yeah you see it's like it's already like have have some something so yeah and also not you not in rush you just you just try different things just apply it and like you see how it's gonna go okay maybe not like this yeah yeah of course we can mm, not all drum rack but for some sounds that's what I'm start to doing now so the thing is I, I want to add some more high 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 percussion so it will be uh, you cannot really notice it but it will make some really nice uh, thing to the track so uh, I just trying to do different things now usually I have no plan what I gonna do with this just make the velocity lower so it's not gonna hit so loud so yeah and then you can just like uh, try or like So yeah, for example, it, it, if it's like this already, then for, of course you can uh, you can add uh, more. Like, let's make one more drum rack. Make it from a scratch. You put uh, you put the drum rack, and then let's let's make the drum rack from beginning. And uh, you can see it's uh, just uh, this kind of hi hat. Maybe we we'll look for some uh, closed hi hat. Maybe someone, some of them, drums, drum one shot. Oh, okay, close, closed hi hat. So it's different kind of hi hat. So usually you need like uh, kind of hi hat or kind of shakers to make uh, one sixteen thing, which gonna make a groove a bit, uh, a bit interesting. Okay. So the thing why I make a, a new channel for this kind of uh, closed hi hat because we need to make a side chain same as our bass line. We just duplicate it and put uh, to the hi hat. As you say, like we can put now like some kind of uh, reverb uh, to the sounds we make uh, before, like this one. But you you check you uh, close the high cut.
Yeah, I did a side chain for only for cli closed hi hats. I didn't make side chain, of course, for the main hat. But for the closed hi hats, you you need to you you need to do by your by a side chain, or you can or you can make it with velocity, of course, like this. You know, you can change the velocity. You just keep the third one, uh, but the first one and uh, the rest you make it ducking little this. You can hear it, it have already like a groove. So the, the my main idea with the hi-hats now, I need to make it hi-hats, they, they need to make the drop, the, the drop is make groove and full drum loop, but in the same time, the best thing is like, you need to make complex sound of different hi-hats, which gonna sound like one thing. So I don't know how you can reach this and it's not so easy to describe, but not like uh, you have really loud one hi-hat, one layer, which is like <laughs> mostly it's not gonna work. It's just some kind of groove which works together. And that's why I add some smaller hi-hats or this kind of stuff to the groove. So it's like. And the really nice thing about uh, like we, we add this uh, thing, like smaller hi-hats, this one, not, not the main uh, off-beat hi-hat. We can uh, just replace it with uh, vocal chops or it's also gonna work. Like for example, we make a new media channel, then make this thing here and just uh, get rid of these ones. We don't need them and keep only this one and can, uh, add uh, some mo more crazy stuff like bongo or just for example but make maybe make it a bit higher oh, wait. of course not on the first beat because it's the kick Uh, with the bongos and all percussion, the, the f you already need to taking care the um, the key. You don't want to have uh, this uh, in other key than G. So you just check what key is this, it is. So it's F and uh, F and G. So basically, you can go try to make them to the root note like G or you can just go to your bass line and you can see if F is okay, is highlighting and uh, D is okay. So basically it's not the G, but it's in our key. So this bongo conga thing gonna work, you know? The highlight is part, you put it on the 10 version, right? Yeah, new? yes, this yeah. is also 11. So. so I think the, this three small ones is, is okay, but this one I not so like, not so much like, so maybe we can. Or like, it's actually it depends what groove we're making, but maybe we can make it even like, Or maybe even like, uh, or even 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 shorter loop. Maybe it's also gonna work because this kind of percussion. you just make two notes longer and it's already much more how to say groovy and much more uh, not aggressive but like more like full on dance floor like like yeah yeah The 
the thing is with this baseline, we how I make it like I just make one oscillate, two oscillator, but you can uh, you can add third one, and then it's gonna make attack for your baseline. You just make the decay low, sustain like this, and put it some higher. It's same like a transpose, but chorus like. Or you can like. So that's how you're gonna make the the baseline uh, picture a bit more interesting than because it was so simple, so it have no character at all. But when you use this third uh, third uh, oscillator, I usually use it for make it a bit more uh, interesting. You see, like. So yeah, for example, you add again. So I didn't add any sounds, but it already sounds like a bit more interesting. And then, of course, you can uh, try to different things. For example, like this, yeah. You can do it with oscillator or other way how to make the bass, uh, the, the sub bass a bit more interesting if you, uh, if you make a new channel and make uh, one more iterator. Just put the same, uh, same, uh, what, what the name, the key, the, the MIDI clip, you, you repeat the MIDI clip but then you change the the waveform to saw, which is gonna be like this. Uh, so yeah, you get rid from the low end. You put like auto filter, and then you can start to play together with all the sounds. It is like uh, is it just depends what is your uh, what is your idea. Uh, so yeah, for example, let's close it everywhere. Let's keep it like this. Okay. Okay. And how do you assign these notes to the automation? Uh, you mean I I press this key, uh -huh. the frequency, and then you will see this uh, this thing. If you not if you if you not see this then you need to press uh, unpress this uh, MIDI mm -hmm. keyboard thing and press A. So like if it is like this, you just unpress this key, press A, and you have the automation thing. Okay. So yeah, like uh, then you just need to play around until you're really happy with uh, what you have. resonance and then basically um, or pitch maybe no, pitch, is, pitch is, already, is too much it's already like sounds like a bass house or something and also you add more like uh, reverb But you need to understand that this is a, this is just a groove. We try to build a groove now, because on top of the groove we're gonna make some elements. Um, the normal elements is like some melodies, arpeggios, synthesizers, or we're gonna make call response thing. Call response is just like some sound gonna do like ba 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 ba, and another sound gonna be like ba 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 ba. So they're gonna like uh, one thing is asking and another thing is responding. 
but this one is not yet this thing. We just try to make groove which uh, which gonna satisfy us and we, we, we gonna be ready for listening for hours and hours. Like that, usually just making this groove until uh, you're really happy and then I move to the other element. Sometime I can move already to different uh, elements from here if I'm happy with this loop, like, uh, or because I'm thinking I'm gonna add something more. Like maybe I have already some vocal in my head or like some, uh, some idea already. Like. It just depends what we're doing because this sound is sounds already more like uh, not so much progressive, you know. If it's this one, we make it lower. It's also we can play some time with the uh, with the pitch. Uh, like this. It's just uh, if you keep it simple, then 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 the low do lower layer gonna work for sure. Then like for example, what we can do is like then uh, we can add uh, one note and make for example like kind of arpeggio thing. So we we need to make it sounds like a plug. Uh, so you add, uh, you cut the low frequency if you want to do like arpeggio. You put MIDI effect, you open MIDI effect, go to arpeggio, put it 116. And like make it a bit uh, higher, plus 12, transpose it, plus 12. For the arpeggio, you can make it even more like uh, side chain, so it's gonna groove even like even more. And really nice thing with uh, arpeggio, then you can really start to looking for some idea for notes, uh, for example, and it will already make some impact. For example, you make it like you make it like this. down or maybe start from down just try to find some idea like which gonna work okay just like you can uh, or you can make it lower then it's like so yeah basically it's like uh, it's already on top on top of your main groove so you can do whatever you want with it and it's, it's kind of like, it's okay because your groove is, is uh, already working well and this, everything is on top of your
like uh, it's like already. What do you think? Where we can move on? It's already hard to tell what is the, the, the baseline. When you put this thing, the arpeggio, on top of your baseline, you already start to thinking that the baseline is but the real, the real sub bass is making another thing. But as soon you make this one, it's glued together already. I can tell that uh, we don't need uh, this thing uh, repeating, repeating all the time, so we get rid half of it. So it's gonna play a bit. So the main the main thing of the clap is actually really important at this point to make it really kind of like slappy and kind of cutting the this thing will really start to like uh, clicking clapping slapping I don't know it just needs to start to move it on and I cannot describe what it's mean but I just try to find different claps. Then I can, if it's not working, I can try to uh, layer it them. But in that, in this point, this clap is really uh, important. Even if it's really low volume, but if it's working together with all the rest, it's gonna really start to move the thing like on, on like moving forward, moving back, like. For Uh, good thing about the clap as soon you okay we found found this clap we like this clap for example and then <coughs> how to understand what volume of the clap you need is just like I, 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 I make it start to go lower volume more lower volume lower volume and then until I really start to not hear it and this is the really good point just in on the border of you hear it like really good and in when it's already you cannot hear it because if you make it too loud it's gonna take too much too much space of your mix and the rest of the thing gonna be not there like it's good for just uh, orthodox tech house where the clap and the hi-hats just so massive but for most uh, music which consists uh, some melodies and some more deeper things some atmosphere things you need to sit the clap a bit like lower volume better to make it lower volume than it's loud volume you can clear, clearly see this if you check the music from the best producers in the genre like for example the guys like Stan Colif they do it so low volume you cannot even hear like what what's going on like yes the f yeah the first of course like most of time is the groove and uh, as soon I have a groove I will try to find some good element which gonna describe the old track now I have uh, the, the bass the drums one element which describing the groove in this case is the arpeggio we can do it uh, with other thing with not arpeggio or change the arpeggio
This one's pretty cool. It sounds almost like some acid thing, which I, I, I think is pretty cool. It's better than just uh, this uh, 116. And also you can work with the... Yeah, like for example, this sound is better than it was before. Let's delete Stan Colif. Oh, sorry. Uh, so yeah, like uh, why it's good? Because you already clearly see automation idea, uh, which you can apply, and uh, it will uh, make some kind of build up already. For example, like if uh, after I make a loop and groove, I go for uh, I go for building a first kind of drop and uh, breakdown and drop. So try to find some idea, make mini drop to see will it work like when it hits. So for example, in this case, I'm gonna do like this just for try. And then I can uh, I can put some reverb to uh, <coughs> to the main to the master channel. Just make it a little bit uh, like uh, like uh, same as a, you you are DJing and you just add the reverb effect. Uh, wait, like this. Like yeah, for example, we can uh, we can cut the kick from uh, here. Uh, just let's make it like this. Deactivate. Yeah, for example, it can be just like this, or we can uh, we can take the the, the last uh, thing and try to change the notes just to see maybe we can build uh, some kind of uh, melody or something just hi highlight the keys uh, maybe like this it's just like is it working or it's not working so we also we can try maybe take out the the, the drums it's not a drum why it's wait 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 Yeah, like for example, if we cut totally, that's fine, it can work. 
but we can uh, take them out uh, like this. Let's keep a, let's keep a clap, but uh, oh wait wait, let's erase like. So yeah, let's keep a clap, open it, and uh, make small uh, drum fill with the clap. It's okay, I think it's, uh, it's okay. It's, it's not, you know, it's working even we not add white noise. If we add the white noise, it's gonna be already like fantastic. Like. I noticed you don't EQ eight each of your tracks, right? Mm. <laughs> or is that something you do after? No, actually, I EQ eight the, you see, I EQ eight this acid thing. Yeah. We can call it acid. Uh, this is the sub. It's not EQing at all because it's just a sub. Uh, I'm not doing much EQ8 for sub. I'm not doing much EQing for my kick. I just try to find good kick and I'm not make any compression, nothing on it. Just it's usually really clean. That's okay. yeah. If it sounds clean to you, you're not going to bother with the EQing. Anymore. Yeah, I, 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 I'm at least for now. I'm maybe I don't have the perfect studio. I'm not uh, doing much of uh, EQing of, of kicks. I just try to find good sample pack with good kicks. And with the sub, it's actually no point to do much EQing with it because the root key is good. I like the, the frequency there and it's only one note. So basically we don't need compression to, to squash it for the same volume when the different notes hits. Is this is the one note. So what we need to EQ like <laughs> is basically working and uh, you can of course you can apply EQ to, uh, to, to drums but uh, I'm pretty sure you can see they already kind of cut it. There's nothing going on I can Yeah, it's like it's just working already. Like, let's just add a uh, simple, uh, simple uh, white noise. Basically, when it's white noise, you don't care the 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 key because it's just the white noise on any. So we can choose the white noise, and then use the frequency, go down, and just like. Really important to put uh, to white noise. You just add a little bit. I, I add return channel. I also automate the return channel. You can see and return channel. I'm using the pong delay, which is like doing like this. You can add more, so it's gonna have some tail. And that moment, like, of course, like, what I'm usually also doing is just put some kind of crash. The crash is also us usually working. Okay, just make it simple. So how you leave the release? Yeah, white noise. I ah, I yeah, release, right? I no. no, I send the return. Uh -huh. I send the. This is the automation for return. But you cut. Yeah. 
Really good thing with the crashes, for example, is uh, you, you, you take the same crash, you reverse it, and uh, our kick and ends and all drums ends here. You can see that we, uh, we finish, not finish, we, we, cut, we cut our drums from here. So you can make this uh, crash, reverse it, and it's gonna make it's it's gonna introduce the cutting. I don't know. Like it, it's gonna introduce the this moment when you cut the drums. Wait, we forget to change the. It's not the beats. You need to put the complex, for example. And let's. Uh, it's too long. It's almost like uh, like reverse crash or reverse white noise so let's just make it smaller and because we just need this kind of thing you know so let's check so that's what we need So yeah, the thing is that this thing will help to uh, move on to another part of a track. So this, when this thing happen, happening, this uh, reverse crash, it helps to introduce the, uh, the moment where we cut the low end. So this is, it have also the uh, return to the B. So uh, the B ping pong delay, so together is just like. Yeah, in uh, the same moment, like you can, uh, there is a good point to uh, make some sounds uh, like big sound or like small sound, like some kind of pads, because this kind of reverse thing is really working well with uh, with uh, with the ping pong delay. For example, we can. For example, let's try this one. Uh, make it like put the MIDI key button. So and then you just so yeah. But the thing is that uh, I think is bet be better way if uh, you make a MIDI clip, you find your key this G so yeah it sounds you make it clean like this okay maybe shorter maybe even shorter okay then you can just uh, freeze freeze track and then you can flat turn track and then you can have this sound which uh, was a MIDI okay let's I forget to do one thing Let's add reverb first. Same sound, add a little bit reverb, make it uh, longer, even more. Okay, and now we do the freeze. So what freezing is doing is just take all this information and, and make it as a as an audio file. So it, it sounds the same, but it's already audio file, and you can work it same with uh, like a, like a sample. So I reverse it, and instead of being pow, now it's like wow, like this. <laughs> so it sounds like this. Like wait, yeah. And you put automation for your ping pong thing. Uh, like this 
So yeah, and then when you apply it to your thing, it's gonna be like this. So yeah, and uh, also like if you um, if you add uh, the same uh, the same uh, side chain, this is also gonna work. Then it's gonna be one 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 doing more of this stuff. Wait, wait, why no? Why no? Okay, okay. Okay, you put the side chain, and then it's like. Really trendy thing since like last uh, few years is just if you add uh, some kind of super saw to the to the first uh, to the first uh, hit, same like uh, make it same like uh, like a crash, but consisting the saw. You can make it like this. So uh, I will I will make it, and you will understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> So yeah, let's uh, let's why no wait. Well, uh. Ah, sorry, I forget. So yeah, let's make it two oscillator. Go for uh, saw. But for sure you need to EQ it, you cut the low. And uh, you put uh, the, um, the same side chain to it, apply same, same side chain. Make it maybe uh, longer. Maybe uh, also in the end you can make it as a as a return with a ping pong delay. So yeah, like it's gonna sound like this. Maybe it's too crazy. You can uh, take out the acid sound to give space for this uh, super saw. What you also can do with this super saw element, this is also pretty cool to make kind of uh, like a melody, not a melody, but some notes you know not we we still only one note you know so you can like uh, actually we're not on a g so basically we're on a so you can make it like uh, a and then like g for example
also like you make the same super saw, you take out the reverb and try to find some like so yeah like we can go to MIDI effects, put a scale and make a minor scale, choose our key, our key is A then anything you press gonna work so like let's let's This one actually okay, yeah? So how we can do this, we can uh, press record. And while we're gonna press everything, it, we will record automation together with... Uh, so yeah, like for example, let's uh, make it together. It's a really simple uh, picture, like, I think it's something like this. Okay, this is missing, so we can just uh, copy this one. Ah, no, 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 not like this, so yeah, we can, uh, okay, I think it's, I think it's something like this, and then we can loop it. So the, why I'm doing this and what is this, uh, the, the idea behind this thing is just make complex sound to, they sound kind of together, but you make it with different things, so, but together they're gonna sound like this, like uh, the second sound gonna come out from the first one. And then in the end, you can uh, also apply back. Like. So yeah, and, 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 and you put like, uh, apply some uh, ping pong delay. I think it's go, uh, it goes too, too low, so we can keep it like this. Yeah, maybe this is already like too much. But I mean like it's just like depends what you're doing. Or you know it can go until uh, until really low until here. Let's keep it like this, and then you can make it like this. You know. Basically, you can see already like we developed this thing and uh, uh, this super saw is not so good together with the acid so you can already imagine you already can have two different parts of your track in one part you will have this kind of super saw then you can make some small breakdown big breakdown back to the acid from acid you can go to the breakdown and from the breakdown you can go back to this one and it's 
it's gonna change, but basically the groove is the same. It's just different uh, uh, scenes and different tricks you're doing. But the main thing you just need to understand what is your main groove, what is the uh, idea, the atmosphere of the track, and then you make your decisions uh, according to your uh, idea. So yeah, something something like this. It's just how to say like just try different things. Uh, it's nothing really hard, and uh, I didn't make any super. Uh, Synthesize or sound designs. You can see it's just really easy to be done, and you can go like you can go far from here. You can you can make some resonance or like. Uh -huh, okay, so this one we don't need. So, or you can also apply the amount. You make it low first, and then you start to add it. Uh, it's also, you can see, you can try like this. Uh, if you cut everything out, for example, or it's actually a really good trick uh, to um, you group everything, you uh, cut it like this, except your sound. Wait, so it's gonna be like this. And then it's gonna back, you know, to this thing. Like, so it's gonna sound like this. But again, like the thing about this one, I think you, you, you cannot just go and copy past these two things and just go back to this one. So this one I hit one time and then you just uh, try to make it different, same instrument, but different way, not repeat the same thing. That, that's what really make difference between uh, who is just beginning producing and who is a bit better in this is just he's not repeating the same things because basically it's also going to work gonna work also if we add more like atmospheric things on, on top of it so yeah something like this this my water okay uh, what you think yeah? yeah good for the base what is time now okay one and a half hour like what you think you have any question we can I can go and make some other things what what you request? Yeah. Something with hats, hmm? high hats. You need something to like crunch or those kind of You mean now it's it's. You need some plugins. Yeah, the thing is, of course, like when I gonna develop the breakdowns, uh -huh. I just put uh, reverb on uh, on a group. For example, uh, pff, uh, reverb. Wait. Reverb, just go simple, take out the high cut, and make it just like, not, not nothing really crazy, just same everyone doing, just something.
can cut the drums and it's already like a different like thing. So yeah, keep this in mind. But uh, keep you can keep them like uh, big elements. Yeah, but for for drums for sure. Also, you can just put some delay just to make it even more like uh, wider or whatever. But but basically, sound wise, I can make. Uh, for hi hats, especially for close hi hats, for this 116, to make it wider, you can just, of course, probably you know this one. You just put the you apply not put you apply delay. You make it uh, unsync. And then you put it like apply one is like 10, and another one is like 10 around. One is one and one is 10, and then it's gonna go like wider we have only one speaker which no make sense now but that's how you make them wider but basically uh, all other effects i'm using on the drums just to they are more about arrangement rather than just uh, like uh, part of groove or sound design yeah you can you can do like you can do overdrive for some of these sounds if you want to make them a bit more crunchy if it's if it's your idea like why not basically most of things is working like but for me the drums now is like this is the drums i'm not taking them so serious i just make them sounds okay good clean and uh, not make much stuff with them it's actually a really good idea to add uh, white noise but as a part of a groove just make white noise same as a hi-hats or like some something just make some small sounds like it's also gonna make uh, the, the the sense to add the white noise to the to the main groove but hi-hats and the claps more than enough some Congo bonga is also can really nicely working, especially if you make them pretty big, like Stan Kolev doing. You can hear he have this like boom, boom, this kind of things. This just it's kind of already part of a bass line. So yeah, you can you can do. It depends of what you is doing, what you're gonna do. Like uh, yeah, what you want to do more? What you think? Yeah, because I can move to the audio, as I said, just for, let's for example, take this MIDI, duplicate, make an audio clip, and record this, uh, record this hi-hats, for example. Like, okay, we're gonna record it. Sorry. And then, I'm gonna apply some crazy uh, I mean I'm not even like thinking what I'm doing. So yeah, so, like we record this thing and then we can take out the delay and then we can work with uh, this uh, thing we have. So for example, let's make the our drum loop with the kick. So of course this is a bit too much, but uh, what you really can do is find some some extra things to uh, to edit somewhere like for example just if if it's gonna be like this for example as I said I'm not even like uh, checking but uh, oops but this might work for example wait Then you can, uh, what is the, you take out this and make this kind of 
thing. Just this is gonna be already like a uh, hi hat, but you can uh, work with them differently, you know, just like looking which part is lacking of sounds. Just then, then you can make it a bit more interesting groove, you know. That's how I s work with the samples, just make. It's almost the white noise, so yeah. And uh, yeah. Let's check if it work or not, like with the top. So yeah, and then I just apply this one. This just same kind of adding the new hi-hats, but uh, it's already a bit better than just the hi-hat because it have already reverb, it have already delayed, so they kind of sit in the mix far and they not bother you. They just eat, add this uh, small thing to the groove and uh, what I'm doing now is like really try to make them according to my bass line. So my bass line have turu turu boom. So I need to make them work together with uh, the main groove with the bass. really really nice also thing about like okay for example let's go for let's not go for clap uh, let's go uh, for uh, okay clap and snare so yeah let's um, let's insert midi clip and go lower for snare for example I don't know what is this but let's check like Okay, let's make it uh, just like So yeah, and uh, then we can uh, we can add again some echo. So yeah, and then in the end it's gonna be like. Okay, maybe like this, somewhere like. Wait. So yeah, like, and we can uh, not add it to our group, so it's gonna be uh, out of our group. So we will hear this atmospheric thing. And uh, for example, like we can make it uh, more of them, but uh, let's on diffuse thing only in the last part and uh, put the EQ and make them coming from somewhere like this. So they're gonna sound like. So basically what they are doing is kind of drum feel to introduce this kind of this silent thing like It 
uh, actually also possible to like um, as soon we cut the low uh, I mean the low from uh, the, the main the main channel have no low now so we can just uh, put our snare thing make them this one okay okay let's make uh, <laughs> I mean, they just always works, and uh, if you know what to do with them, they always like make this tension and uh, make just works. I every single impact of a drop gonna be bigger than without. For example, for the last part, we can just like apply this one, but make them like really, really short. Even like uh, if you just take one clap, put some delay and it just make like but if you make it properly and if you make it not small, the thing is if you try to make everything small then it all sounds gonna be like weird. Uh, with this kind of stuff you make it sounds noticeable so people really understand oh this is not the people but you can hear that this is clap but like when it's going somewhere it can be just a big part of uh, of a track or just solid element not really small so when i go for this kind of hi-hats i try to keep them really small when i make a uh, drum loops drum fills better to go bigger for them because then the all sound overall sound gonna be like much more stronger because they are doing nice uh, tension so then you want to make them big yeah, something like this. Yeah, what? Good, huh? Yeah, like this. And you, fi you, fit, you need to finish this track. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I will send it's it for you. Yeah, one important thing: uh, you need to save your project all the time. <laughs> we didn't sa save anything, so let's uh, save it somewhere. Not here, but like let's go to project. Let's make new one. Let's. Two plus. Okay, if I go for master, I uh, of course this AQ3 is only arrangement element. Reverb is arrangement element. So I have Pro L. This is the limiter. I, I didn't count it as a <laughs> as a plugin because it's it's not uh, have any uh, difference in sound. But usually I make just a limiter. And then I just, what I'm doing, how I apply my... Uh, so I use the limiter and uh, what I also use, I'm using the um, glue compressor. I will find it. Wait a second. It have it it ca it have a preset mastering catch peaks. 
So what it's doing is just catching some uh, peaks. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I'm looking that this arrow is just slightly moving. It's not squashing hard. It's just really get rid of this. Okay, for example, like this. And then I also go to multi-dynamic compressor, put, put it. And then by ear, I just uh, checking the amount I want. Usually it's around like 40, 30. What this thing is doing is just bringing all the drum hi-hats a bit like further and make them a bit wider and much stronger like usually I doing this in the end like when I already done the track I just add this one and everything just start to sound even better and I was like yeah like, but you can make it from the beginning but usually I, I really make it just in the end and then you can really hear it just make all drums a bit more juicy like you do not say frequencies or you will leave it Freak what frequency? Yeah, because it has uh, three frequencies, right? I usually I know. <laughs> I just I just like this and not oh, even okay, okay. just it just working like. And you can hear the the groove start working even more intense like <laughs> before it was like more soft. Now it's like come on. You should, you have to dance, like you have no choice. Yeah, like. it's more solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but this is really simple and I really know what I'm doing and why I'm doing this. <laughs> Even this one, I know it just sounds better and that's it. So I can hear it. Before, when I was learning some YouTube tutorials and everything, they apply different sh things. I never can tell the difference and what it's doing. And only because I saw some ideas, I just apply them and not even understand what is really doing. You need to glue glue compressor to glue everything together. Like, no, I'm adding this one to catch this uh, peaks. And if I export the track, you really can hear, you can see this on a wave table of a track, you can see these peaks. So what is uh, glue compressor doing is just cutting them. So when, after it cutting, I expand this with multiband and then I just, uh, with the limiter, I just raise the volume. I can use the limiter and uh, something like uh, how exciter or no, not exciter. The L2 waves L2. What is this like volume? Um, ozone or waves L uh, or waves uh, L2. I use. I can use them and just make the volume up volume. You know, like but and in the end, the limiter to really stop the to to. Yeah, yeah, just to make RMS more. But as I said, this is work for me already. Like, okay, I'm I'm not the best mas mastering engineer, but I can tell that if you do like this, it's uh, more than enough to play in the club, any venue, big, small, and it's gonna. If it's work, it's gonna work. If it's not work, it's not because of your mastering. It's not because you doing shitty chain like. If track working, it will work like this. If you send it to some really good mastering engineer, maybe he can uh, extract even more from this uh, mix down, but this is gonna work for, for sure. This, th then it's more about ideas uh, than the sound quality. Most of people, they cannot tell any difference. For most of them, like you have a stereo, like two speakers for one hour, one speaker, not work you come for people and you say you cannot hear one speaker not work and they're like what really that's because they're drunk yeah <laughs> <laughs> Both of them are like yeah yeah. yeah so yeah that, that's the thing so for them is like no no one gonna say oh the frequency of multiband compression is too much like <laughs> <laughs> why he not choose the right frequency like i can hear it so this chain is more than enough before i try to send my uh, tracks to some mastering and until now, I have a friend, some time to time, I send one of my track to him. Every time he send me back, it sounds different. It's not my track and it's like, no, what, what, what the fuck is this like? 
and he'd tell me, no, this uh, sounds better. Like, I'm like, no, no, this is not for me. Like, he's... Yeah, and he had, yeah, he had, yeah, he yeah, had of, co of course, yeah, but as you, I said... You it for mastering? Really rarely, just I have a one good friend who is doing professional mastering. I send to him, and usually he send me back, and I always say, no, 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 no fuck it, tell, like, just, no, no. Just I like my versions more than than There's his. There's those sites that you can just upload and they master it for you, right? Yeah, uh, but That's also like also you can use the I don't know I have Ozone here. Uh, Ozone also have this Auto Master, and I don't have it now. So basically, this Ozone plugin is do Auto Mastering, and I saw the video guys comparing this Auto Mastering thing, this uh, website Lander Lander then this Ozone, and then professional mastering engineer, and then just compare the mastering they, they get. In the end, it's just, if your mix down good, if your ideas are good, it's gonna work. Like, people gonna dance, people gonna like it, people gonna listen it. No, any mastering cannot fix your track, and you it's... Do your own mix down? Yeah, 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 all, all, all. That's also the good point, I do everything by my own, so I'm not rely on uh, someone else job. Like I'm not thinking like someone gonna make magic from my track. It's just like some labels, they require unmaster. So I send them unmaster and they do master by them. But then I can like it, I can don't like it. I can play my version or their version, but they, they do it by themselves. But most of time I do by, m by my own. And as I said, it's like, it can work in the club like this. And uh, this is more than enough for me. Like if uh, if I'm producing tracks which gonna be number one overall main chart in Beatport and millions and millions of people gonna listen it, probably we're gonna need to do some mastering to make it like uh, listenable on any kind of uh, sound system. But for me, this is, is okay. Like I play this uh, kind of chain my tracks in all venues in Copangan and it's working okay. It's like and when I send to some labels, they always like, okay, no problem, sound mastering is okay. It's like, it's not big deal from from you. When I was starting producing, I was much more thinking about mastering. I need it now. No, I don't need it. Like, and I, I think you just you just go simple way and like better to make better music than looking someone for mastering. Like, don't spend your money. Like. I have money before, maybe that's why I was sending for mastering. And they charge like 50 euro for one track, 100 euro for one track is like, like this is already working. Sometimes you can hear the music which is sound awful and nobody cares. Like is, uh, this is already sound decent. It's, it's in, for in, my, in my point of view, if it sounds okay, normal, then it's okay. Like, just no, no harsh sound, nothing distract you, nothing bother you, then it's okay. If it sounds bad, then, then for sure, maybe you can fix it. But uh, if it just sounds normal, that's it. Like just not, not overdo it. Try to not overdo it. Try to not uh, make too much of sounds, too much of uh, chains, too much of compressions, know what you're really doing, why you use this instrument, this instrument, exactly what is your goal, what is your idea, try to be more conscious about what's going on, like, and then it's gonna work, like, so I know my, my main thing is just make a track, go play it, if it's work, then it's work, if it's not work, no, no, okay, no problem, maybe next one, maybe I'm not lucky today, tomorrow you're gonna be lucky, so, I'm not so into rely on result. I'm not uh, worry about result. I just know that some tracks gonna work and some will not work. But if I'm not, if uh, if I'm not gonna make all these tracks, maybe I cannot make the the best of my music. Like so, yeah. Sometimes I need to do some shitty music. So sometimes I need to do good music. It's just it just depends. But what I really doing and trying to do is finish all my projects like or I finish them or I delete them not keeping them not stacking them if you check like uh, I don't maybe here I don't have so basically I have now I have only like two projects which kind of unfinish it because in one I need to change the vocal and another I need to also ch just change little bit arrangement but they already done I can play them I play one of them already like six seven times 
so it's unfinished because I just want to change the vocal and that's it. But basically it's, it's really ready. It's not like a loop, it's not like semi ideas. If I have like a loop or a two minute idea for like long time, I just delete it because like, if I make it, I will make it already. Like if I not make it, I will never gonna make it. Like, or at least I gonna save it and uh, take it somewhere away from my eyes. Maybe I will open like in three years and then I can finish it, but not like, not keep in my head this project. Like try to have only real project you're working on and the rest just not not your business, like not your uh, not your thing. Like just keep it clean, like and finish finish every single project as you can. As I say, usually like if I make a project, if I make a track, one day, two day, I can finish it. Like from start to beginning, then I go play it a couple of times fix a couple of things and it's done. Like, it's really simple. Like, and uh, it, it can work like this. Then uh, doing, 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 and overdoing and never, never gonna finish it. This uh, 100 project never works. It usually before, it, it always end up and ends up that I have 100 projects and one day I I'm have a hangover or something and I'm become a crazy and just delete everything and like, Arr! it happened with me like two, two times or three times. So now I try to not get to this point where I'm really angry about, I have so many projects and you want to finish them. You like something. What one of my friends doing, who is really good producer. Uh, if he don't, he not finish some idea and he have this kind of one minute, two minute thing. He just save one or two element. Why he really like this idea. He save it as a template and uh, delete the project, but he still have, for example, I really like this uh, thing to these two things, like pam, 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 this, these two things. So I can just group in and save it and try to apply only these two channels to uh, other uh, projects. That's what he's doing and I think it's, it's better than keep all project and thinking about and try to finish it and like, uh, yeah. It's just never gonna happen. Like you will waste so much time for this, and especially uh, when you finish a project and it's not working, it's so hard to fix it. It's so hard to fix to make it work. Maybe you don't happy with the, especially when you're not happy with kick or the bass. If you just start to fix your kick and bass, all your track gonna like <laughs> falling apart. Because this is like uh, main part of your track. You cannot fix it after. You need to make it good from the beginning. In the end, it, it, it requires so much energy from you to really fix it. And while you're gonna fix it, you will never gonna like this track anymore because it will be, you will just change a little bit the volume of the sub. You change the kick, then you need to change the hi-hat, then you need to change the clap, then this gonna work like this. And you're gonna just like always checking, 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 checking all these uh, sounds, what the volume, you're never gonna finish it. Like 